Hello, this is Todd Tracy at the Tracy Law Firm here with another Todd Talk. Today I want to talk with you about bus safety. So many of the times when we put our children on the bus to go to school, or ourselves when we ride a, a bus from the uh, airport to the rental car company, or we send our children, our high school children, on a field trip or on an athletic event, or college athletes ride on a bus, they have no idea what the safety systems of that bus are like. Well, I'm here today to tell you that school, that school buses, motor coaches, and buses in general have inherent design and manufacturing flaws. I'm sitting in front of a bus here that was involved in a accident where a, another vehicle sideswiped that vehicle and then this bus rolled over one quarter turn. Now what is unique about this particular bus is it is designed out of a material that is commonly used to build lawn furniture. One and a half inch square tubing. Now square tubing by and large is fine if you want to uh, put a fence around your vegetable garden. It's fine if you want to uh, have a go-kart. It's fine if you want to use thick steel gauged um, material so that you can design a race car, but you do not use flimsy one and a half inch uh, material for safety. Now, another thing I want you to look at here. This is another part of the, stu of the structural integrity of buses, this foam. Now, this is another part of the structural integrity that we see on buses. I don't know about you, I call this kindling. I do not call this structural integrity material. Now, what's more important than that, than the design of these buses, is the manufacturing of the buses. If you're going to use cheap, flimsy material, then you might as well at least use good welding and have good welding protocols in place. However, this particular bus, they missed most of the weld joints. When they did actually provide a weld, they only hit it on one corner instead of on four. And when you, when you take flimsy material and you have bad or poor quality welds, that's a recipe for disaster. Now, we need to add one more ingredient to our defective and unreasonably dangerous bus here and that is the lack of testing. This particular bus, the bus manufacturer conducted no crash test of any kind, no frontal impact crash test, no side impact crash test, and no rollover testing. Unlike the vehicle manufacturers that routinely conduct real world crash tests in the front, in the sides, in the rear, on top, they drop vehicles, they roll over vehicles, they use pendulums. The bus manufacturers do nothing. Now, why is that? Because the bus manufacturers say, we're not required by law to do that. Well, I've got, I got, I got to tell you, most of the manufacturer, most of the vehicle industry are not required to do what they do, but they do it anyway because they know that lives are at risk. So if you're going to have precious cargo in your buses, you should do everything humanly possible from an engineering standpoint, from a design standpoint, from a manufacturing standpoint, and from a testing standpoint. Because when you don't engineer and when you don't test, people die. And people did die in this particular bus crash. In fact, four softball players perished. And instead of playing softball this spring, their parents are mourning their loss.